to the Crafts for Paints channel. So this is a small channel where I discuss everything that goes on in the 3D printing space, either personally from my own sales and Etsy adventure, where I have a small print farm and I sell things on Etsy, or uh, printers that come out and are new to the market and how they can be used in your workspace, how they can be implemented, what the pros and cons are. Also print and paint my own models. So you'll see some of those tutorials on this channel as well. And we'll discuss 3D printing news, whatever's going on in the industry that we think would be beneficial to you as a consumer. Today, we wanna to talk about something that was just revealed a few days ago, the H2D from Bamboo Labs. So this printer has been at least in my opinion, on the minds of a lot of people for a long time. There was a leak a few months ago that showed what looked like a flyer, it looked like some type of documentation that was possibly going to be included inside the box with the printer. It was kind of hit or miss whether it was real or not. A lot of speculation, a lot of, of you know, internet detectives trying to figure out what this exactly could mean for this printer but we have a more recent leak now with an image that really tells us, I think, a lot about this printer. Now, obviously this is not finalized. This is a leaked image from most likely an engineer or a tester. So there is a chance that some of this will change in the coming weeks. But from what we see so far, pretty interesting stuff. First of all, the first thing I noticed when I saw this image was the bed size. So this is about a 350 by 320 ish bed size and that is surprising i really expected bamboo labs to go to 350 350 because that is what some of the competitors in the space have gone to and i felt incorrectly apparently that that would have been the minimum that bamboo labs would have wanted to pursue but based on the image at least it does seem to be a 354 by about 320 and it's hard to make out the image exactly but it doesn't seem to be the same number it looks like it's slightly less on the other axis which is still a good printer don't get me wrong the standard x1 carbon p1s p1p from bamboo labs is a 254 by 254 so but sorry 256 by 256 by 256 so this is a significant increase in work area but still surprising it didn't go all the way to 350 350 350 which is what i was kind of anticipating other thing we notice on this image, if you look closely, the glass doors and the side panels have a glass or plexiglass of some sort that is green tinted. This is unique. I don't see any reason why a FDM printer needs a non-clear glass or, you know, coated glass or colored glass. There's no reason that would be necessary unless you're doing something else in that print space. In this case, based on this top portion that shows what looks to be a laser module, this may be a printer slash laser combo machine, which I'm not sure if I'm happy about. I'm not sure if I'm excited about. I'm, I guess I'm worried more than anything because I really feel like I was expecting a very specialized machine in one thing. And traditionally, what we've seen from other companies, when you start adding all these extra components to it, it does laser, it does 3D printing, it does, uh, you know, CNC. You, you tend to get a product that's not that great at any of those things. So this worries me a little bit, but honestly, Bamboo Labs, as far as 3D printers go, have really impressed me. My, the, the Bamboo Labs, when I first obtained one, was a night and day difference from the Creality Ender 3 and Ender 5 that I had previous. I mean, night and day. It really was just groundbreaking in my opinion. Uh, it went from being a tinkering required tool to just a tool. I just did what I wanted. I gave it my task and it completed it. So far, so good. Obviously it needs maintenance. It has parts that break, nozzles get clogged. That is 3D printing in a nutshell and that'll never go away. But what they did really turned it from a tinkering required ecosystem to it just kind of works usually and you send it and it's probably going to print which was again a far cry from what i had with ender threes ender fives but that's just my personal experience this isn't a sponsored video this is not bamboo paying for anything this is my opinion based on what i have seen using my own machine in my small 
two printer print farm. So this worries me a little bit, like I said, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is gonna be implemented in a really great way. Maybe this is gonna be implemented in a very, you know, complete package and it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna wait and kind of hold judgment on that. But I am surprised. I was not expecting a laser module to be included or possible in this package. And the other component that worries me about laser modules in general is that a lot of times you're cutting wood um, that leaves a lot of stuff behind. You have charred remains, you have all this aerosolized wood particle and all of that inside the same space where I 3D print. I'm not sure if that long term leads to some gunked up wheels or, you know, ball bearings that have suit in them or whatever. So again, I'm not sure, but benefit of the doubt. The other thing we see in this image that I think is of extreme importance is what looks to be an AMS2, AMS2 Pro, something of the sort. It seems to have a temperature monitor. It seems to have a humidity monitor. So it seems to be a improved version of the current AMS. But what I'm really hoping for, please, Bamboo, I hope you did this. Put a door on the bottom of the unit so I can access those PTFT tubes that get filaments stuck in them over and over again sometimes. Please, please, other companies have done this. Their AMS or multi-material systems have a trap door in the bottom. You open it, you remove the tubing, put in the new Bowden tube if that one's damaged, or just remove the stuck filament that's inside, reconnect, close the door, put it back, you're done. Bamboo Labs has a much more difficult teardown, and I say difficult loosely, it's not complicated, but it's much more in the way of steps to, to get to that filament that is stuck that you just want to remove. So please, please, Bamboo. I, I just really want a tractor on the bottom of this AMS unit. That would be fantastic. So we'll see if that's included. We'll see what this thing looks like, but it does seem to have some type of heating element. It does seem to be some type of temperature monitoring on that screen. I am not sure if this is a side unit that can be attached to an old AMS and then convert that to be the same type of unit. I am not sure. This, in my opinion, is probably a whole new AMS system that has nothing to do with the old one and it's just the new and improved version and they're not really backwards compatible or anything, but we won't know until it is released or announced. I expect this is gonna be very soon because all these leaked images, first the documentation, now an actual printer on a workbench being worked on, to me, seems like this is gonna be close. So we're gonna find out real soon if any of this stuff is really relevant and really what we're expecting to see. The last thing, that I noticed that I think everyone noticed. There are, there's a two hot end extruder type setup. So my understanding based on previous patents that were found is this is a type of system that one nozzle can be extruding and creating your model while the other one is retracted or pulled up so that you can then switch the filament in that nozzle that is not being used and then put it to use afterwards with the new filament that you were going to need next already pre pre programmed or preset does this save on purging somewhat if you only use two colors and in theory yes because let's say i'm printing a candy cane it's red it's white i'm printing with white that nozzle finishes next nozzle moves into place now we print with red there's no purging required in that scenario but let's say we're doing four materials or five colors or whatever at that point you're not saving as much on the purge what you will save on is time because while one nozzle is printing that color that's required for that layer, your nozzle that is now retracted or in holding pattern can be loading your next filament so that when it's time for that nozzle to come into play, it can move into place and just immediately start printing, which saves you that time that previously was used for just swaps. But now if the color changed, that nozzle is going to have to purge anyways. So time-wise, we will have to wait to see. There's a good chance this won't save us as much time as we would like. Once we go to multi-material printing again or multiple colors, this is maybe really only gonna save us time if it's a two color print, or if you're using two different materials, for example, in the case of PLA and PETG, one for support and one for your actual model. Well, in that case, 
yes, this system might be very, very good for saving you some time. So that's what we see so far. What we don't see, of course, is the price. The expectation. This is gonna be higher than the X1 Carbon, guaranteed. They've said it themselves on a Twitter post. This is targeting the next market up. So in theory, if you thought the X1 Carbon was expensive, this one's gonna be priced out for you. Now, if you felt the X1 Carbon give you a lot for your money, this may be the next evolutionary step forward because you're getting ideally a larger printer, a bigger workspace, dual nozzles, a lot of benefits there, but it is gonna be more expensive. We're expecting, and again, this is a guess just based on what we know from the X1 Carbon and where the industry is at, somewhere in the 2,500 range is our guess. Now, I would love to be wrong. I would love to see this at 1,800, fantastic US dollars, that'd be great. Uh, 1,700 US dollars, that'd be fantastic with an AMS included, that would be great. But I don't expect that to be the case. I think this is really trying to target that middle ground between the Prusa XL, which is $4,000, $5,000 with uh, five tool heads. I think they're targeting the, well, what if you got a Prusa XL with only two tool heads? What's the cost for that? $3,000? Let's go under that. And I think that's what they're really targeting. They're trying to stay in that $3,500 is what you'd expect to pay for a two tool head Prusa XL. Can we target something right underneath that and still have, oh, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, I need you. And can you still have a good amount of the people interested in picking this model up or picking this printer up? And again, if you're competing with the Prusa XL with a two tool head configuration, I could see where, you know, maybe 2,300 is very competitive. 2,500 is very competitive but I'm really hoping we're settling more in that 1,900, maybe with the, law, the laser module being an added benefit that you can pay for or decide to forego if you don't need it. That would be great, because I would keep the cost low. If you want the Swiss Army Knife printer, it does everything under the sun, sure, you can go a little bit further and get that extra component. But if you decide, honestly, I don't need that. I just need a printer that's this size, because I print helmets and I print cosplay and I, I print things that are just functional and large then maybe i'm hoping that laser component is separate you don't even need to get it and just get the base printer and the ams unit but it all is something we don't know the details of yet so tell me what you think this is a new channel so as you see the subscriber count is low the comments below are low and i could really use your help because <laughs> if you don't go and subscribe and you don't top down any comments or type down any comments in the bottom yeah youtube doesn't do anything with this. Uh, ideally, I want to grow this channel. I want to bring this to be a channel where, again, exposition, you can see what I'm printing in my print farm. You can see what I'm studying on Etsy. You can see how much money I make. I'm going to try to give you all that information over the next few months and years. And we're also going to review printers. And this printer, for example, is going to be my next review, my first review. This was purchased with my own money. There was no sponsorship. There was no Elegoo sending me a printer. So what I'm going to give you once I review this printer, is going to be candid. It's, I mean, there's not going to be any type of information that's going to come from what the sponsor needed, what the sponsor said, but what did they promise? Um, none of that. It's going to be, I bought this printer. You're going to get to see what I think of it. No sponsorship was used in this video. And the next video where I sponsor, where I review this, nothing was covered for or sent by them. So you're going to get some real good review points and, and details and pros and cons from a real world user who paid for this machine. Anyways, thanks for checking the channel. I really appreciate it and please subscribe. We'll try to do another video soon and we'll see what the H2D from Bamboo Labs brings. I am excited. I don't know about you, but I am excited to see what this brings. Have a good one.